Welcome into Miami Dolphins today. I am your host, R.C. Maxfield, and the Dolphins have made a trade. Jakeem Grant will be sent to the Chicago Bears for a 2023 sixth round pick, and this is exactly why you subscribe to this channel. The news broke less than an hour ago. Producer Sam did all the legwork on this. They just put the, well, not the prettiest face in the world in front of the camera, but I'm here for you, and this is why you subscribe to Miami Dolphins today. We're hitting really the biggest news in the Dolphins world right now, right away, and we'll have you weekly videos, daily videos, whatever you want pertaining to the Miami Dolphins. And the best part about it, it's absolutely free. We're on it all the time. All you got to do is hit that big red button to stay in the know on your Miami Dolphins all season long. Tom Palacero was the one that broke the news. Trade exclamation point. The Dolphins are sending wide receiver Jakeem Grant to the Bears for a 2023rd sixth round pick per sources of Palacero. Again, Jakeem Grant was presumed to be traded this offseason potentially to Carolina. That deal fell through. He even had the blessing of Jakeem Grant to be traded this offseason. Nothing really came of it though, right? And Jakeem Grant has struggled mightily this season so far. And you look at it. The former sixth round pick just he hasn't been used in the receiving game this mu that much this season. And when he has been used in his career, he struggled a bit, right? Higher expectations from the fan base for what we thought Jakeem Grant could bring, but this is good for Miami. He brings back draft capital at a position where, yeah, he was an all-pro in terms of the kink returning and pump returning a couple of years ago on the second team, but really with the, you know, really the salary cap implications of trading him away, this was a good move and you get a sixth round pick. It was really fortunate for the Miami Dolphins that they could really get any kind of draft capital. I mean, looking at his receiving stats this year, it's damn near impossible to catch two passes in the NFL and have negative yards. But Shaquem Grant, congratulations, buddy. You did it. Now, looking at his stats from 2020, he was a little better, right? I think you'd probably expect a little bit more in terms of the average per catch there just because of the speed dynamic he brings. But again, that goes back to my point earlier that he really didn't live up to those expectations that Dolphins fans had, realistic or not, in terms of him stepping up, whether it was for Devontae Parker or other wide receivers that went down. In the return game, he was an absolute menace, really, his whole career. I mean, look at this career punt return stats, 101 opportunities. He had 978 yards and averaged just under 10 yards per punt return and had three TDs. I mean, the positive from this is, is you got a, a pick in Jakeem, for Jakeem Grant, right? But also, you get the sixth overall pick in Jalen Waddell to be the primetime guy in the return game now, at least presumably. Maybe Noah Igbenogany, who was you know, been a healthy scratch for the past couple weeks, steps in and does punt returning. He was only done kick returning in his career at Auburn in college. He averaged just over 27 yards per kick return in college, never returned a punt. Maybe they try and put him back there, maybe not, but I fully expect this to be Jalen Waddle's first come first serve option back there, which I know some might not like. I'm kind of in the hesitant point right there, especially with him coming back from that ankle injury, and he's looking 100%, but don't want to put him back there and have more injury concerns. But, hey, it's football. That's what's going to happen. But here's the trade again. The Dolphins receive a 2023 sixth-round pick for Jakeem Grant, and they save a ton of money, just over $3 million on the cap, do the Dolphins say. But let me know who won this trade. Type shy, C-H-I, for Chicago or MIA for Miami. I'm going to go with Miami on this one. You get a pick for a guy that really wasn't producing and you save some cap money, you take that and run if you're the Dolphins. You know what you also take and run with is this deposit bonus from BetUS. My goodness, now nobody else is doing this. 125% deposit bonus? I mean, producer Sam is looking at me like, how the hell did I not know about this already? Sam, we worked together. You, I thought you know, man, but he didn't. And now you do. Go to chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code DOLPHINS125 to get the best deposit bonus on the internet today. I don't know if I'm betting on the Dolphins this weekend against the defending Super Bowl champs, but hey, when they go to London, you betcha I'm, I'm, I'm putting a little bit of money down on the Dolphins when uh, hopefully Tua time is back in Miami, but you need to go to chatsports.com slash bet. Let's say you put $100 down, right? You get $125 to play with from BetUS, making your grand total $225, and that's just the start of it. They've got great weekly bets on there. It's my go-to on there for NFL. I mean, 
the Cowboy Report guy, Tom Downey. You might want to listen to him. 16-4 and four on his bets, and that's due in large part to BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code DOLPHINS125 to get the best deposit bonus on the internet today. Another roster move for the Dolphins. They signed another offensive lineman. This one from the Saints practice squad in Austin Reeder. He started at the center position for the Chiefs in 2019 and 2020. The Super Bowl teams for the Chiefs. And he will compete with Greg Mance at the center position. Again, I commend Chris Greer for trying, right? But at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of at that point where I just don't trust Chris Greer at all to evaluate any kind of offensive line talent. And I get it. You need a guy with Dieter now on IR at the center position. Greg Mance, a guy that you got before the season started and has started at least one or two seasons in the NFL down in Houston protecting Deshaun Watson. Reader, Dieter and Reader, that's going to get confusing for me. I apologize in advance on that. But, hey, you got a guy that has been on a proven offensive line. He's a veteran. He has good stats in terms of what he's done there. But it's one of those deals where I'm just really not expecting all that much from him in the sense that you're signing a guy off the practice squad. Now, he is a veteran, and, again, you have Grant Greg Little, excuse me. You also have Mance coming over, and now you have Reader. Here's the offensive line, presumably, for week five against the Bucks and Oh, man, Shaq Barrett is probably just smiling from ear to ear right now looking at this Dolphins offensive line. I think Mance and Reeder will compete for this job. I don't expect it to be Reeder right away this week as he was signed on Monday from the Saints practice squad. But you like what you saw from him in 2021 in the sense that he played 14 games. He allowed zero sacks. It was just one of those things where the Chiefs really just kind of really wanted to shuffle it after that Super Bowl debacle they had against the Bucks, where – it seemed like Patrick Mahomes ran for not 500 yards, but 500 miles in that game just to try to stay upright. I like the move from Chris Greer, but at the same time, I'm very hesitant when it comes to him evaluating offensive linemen in terms of Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, Liam Eikenberg, Jesse Davis, whoever it may be. I'm hesitant because of the offensive line struggle so far, but hey, it can't hurt to add him right now, but let's hear it from you. One word reaction to signing Austin Reeder. I mean, why not, right? I mean, it's one of those deals for me. Again, at least they're trying to make the offensive line better. I understand you're not going to go out there and trade for Quentin Nelson or anything like that, but at least going out there, getting some kind of veteran presence on that offensive line with a lot of young guys, including Austin Jackson, who currently leads the NFL in pressures allowed. Who would have thought at that one right there? But subscribe now for me. Come on, nonstop Dolphins updates all year long. And the best part about it, it's 100% free. Nobody else is doing that on YouTube right now. We're less than an hour after this Jakeem Grant news broke from Tom Pelissero, and we're going to have a video out in an hour for you to have our analysis on this trade and saying that, well, the Miami Dolphins won this trade in my opinion because you get a sixth-round pick and you say some salary cap, can't do much better than that in season, and you can't do much better than Miami Dolphins today when it comes to Dolphins coverage on YouTube. And in fact, you can't do any better because this is the best one-stop shop for everything Miami Dolphins all season long. Injury update on Will Fuller. He suffered a broken finger in week four versus the Colts, and Fuller is now considered week to week and is officially out week five against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which leaves the question, which Dolphins wide receiver will step up on the outside in his absence? And now, I think there's some good options, right? Maybe you even get Preston Williams back, replacing Jakeem Grant in terms of the roster spot there, and you just add him to the roster. But overall, the guy I am expecting to really take that Will Fuller role is Devontae Parker, in the sense that I expect Devontae Parker to build upon the week four that he had against the Indianapolis Colts. And now, really, it really wasn't that great, right? Four catches, 77 yards, and a TD. But when you looked at what the offense did as a whole, it's pretty admirable in the sense that Jacoby Brissett just decided, hey, I'm not going to throw further than seven yards down the field. I really like what Devontae Parker brings. He needs to be a little bit more consistent on there. But he's one of those guys where I do expect him to be heavily involved and maybe – Hear me out on this. I know this is a hard proposition right now. Maybe with all of the issues in the Bucks secondary right now, remember they just signed Richard Sherman. They lost another corner in Carlton Davis 
on Sunday night football maybe for some time. They are struggling just to have bodies back there. Maybe the Dolphins can capitalize on that because I expect Parker to build upon his week four, but I also expect more Jalen Waddle involvement with Jakeem Grant gone, whether that's in the kick returning and punt returning game and just getting Jalen Waddle the ball more in general, right? You think about that game against the Raiders. He had 12 catches in less than 60 yards. You realize nobody in NFL history has done that, right? Nobody in NFL history has had 11-plus catches and less than 60 yards. It's never been done before except for Jalen Waddell. That's insane. You need to get this guy in space more. Hopefully the offensive coordinators can do that now and really capitalize on that quick twitch, one step, make a move, and just be gone type plays that Jalen Waddell has shown in his college career and even to some extent in the pros as well. You have to get him more involved. But I'm curious, against the Bucks on Sunday, who will have the most receiving yards for the Miami Dolphins? Will it be Devontae Parker? I'm going to throw Mike Gusecki in there because you got to love the tight end and his vertical threat. And then Jalen Waddle as well. And maybe if you think it's somebody else, maybe a Preston Williams coming back potentially, Albert Wilson, maybe Miles Gaskin hopefully gets involved. Let me know who you think will lead the way on Sunday in receiving yards for the Miami Dolphins. Again, Jakeem Grant traded to the Chicago Bears for a 2023rd sixth round pick. Miami saves a plethora of money in the salary cap and not too bad getting a sixth round pick in return for a guy that has two catches for negative seven yards on the season.